Hello, hello everybody. I'm Kendra. Welcome back to my channel if you're a friend and welcome if you're brand new. Today is Mardi Gras and I'm going to make a, um, let's see, let's start with, um, I'm making red beans and rice from a Zatarain's box mix. I've um, got the trinity here of that kind of cooking, which is celery, peppers, and onion from what I read. So it'll be red beans and rice, and then I'm also going to make sliced sausages, like, um, oh, what are those? I'll show you in a little while, but you know, sausage coins, like, and then also some shrimp. And, oh, and some of those um, biscuits that come from Red Lobster, that you can get them in a box, that garlic butter biscuits or something. I think it sounds like a delicious start for a Mardi Gras dinner. And a king cake for dessert. How about them apples with a baby in it? Not a real baby. You know, they put a baby in a king cake. So, um, I wanted to share with you what the baby signifies in the king cake. So, the king cake is supposed to be in an oval shape instead of round, like sometimes you see it. And an oval shape to signify... What does it signify? It signifies everybody's equal and in one. Yeah, something like that. I read it, I, I promise. And so then there's the colors. So there's purple, gold, and green. And I did my nails for the occasion. So purple signifies, in Mardi Gras, justice. And then uh, green, <laughs> I'm not gonna give you the naughty finger. Green signifies, um, what, faith. And gold signifies power. And you can hardly tell it's gold, but you get it close, you can kind of see it. I only did one finger on each hand in gold because it's that um, glittery stuff. It's really hard to get off in my experience. So anyway, here's my garbage bowl. I've cut the ends off my onions to start. And next I will do Go ahead and just chop up these uh, celeries to just small pieces. I got three stalks here. I know that this uh, Zatarain's mix will probably come with what I need, but I always like to mess around, like my son says, pirate my recipes. I'll show you when I get this part done. Onions or celery are done, and now I just need to chop up these peppers. So if you've never had anything to do with Mardi Gras or like I've never been to Mardi Gras. I've only been to Louisiana a couple times in my whole life and it wasn't Mardi Gras, it was for relatives. But anyway, um, I uh, read that Mardi Gras it translates to mean Fat Tuesday and it's um, Mardi Gras is how you celebrate the end of the feast season which begins, I think it's on January 6th. Um, where people have parties and they feast. And then after, on Fat Tuesday or Mardi Gras, you celebrate and if you drink, you drink, and if you eat, you eat, and you do whatever you like. And then the next day is Ash Wednesday in the Catholic faith. And um, that's when you decide to go ahead and not do that thing that you love, whatever that is. Some people say chocolate, some people say alcohol, some people do other things, you know, whatever. And um, you do that for six weeks. It's the six weeks leading up to Easter Sunday when that stops and you can <laughs> apparently go back to whatever evil thing you like to do. <laughs> and you know what? Like I said, I'm really um, not, I'm, I'm not an expert at all in any of this, but I'm just telling you what I think I comprehended by reading. And if you are big into Mardi Gras, have been to Mardi Gras, I would love to hear about it. Or just if you were raised in the Catholic faith and what your experience was with um, Ash Wednesday and Fat Tuesday or Mardi Gras and that kind of thing. I also read that it's, um, this is just a, a weird tidbit, they have a parade during Mardi Gras in New Orleans. They have Mardi Gras all over the world, but in New Orleans is where the big one is supposedly. And they have a parade and with lots of floats and stuff, kind of like Macy's, you know, it's a huge deal. It's illegal to ride on a float without a Mardi Gras mask. And those are like those beautiful flourish with feathers and colors and sequins and stuff. 
So I didn't know that. I just read that today. Oh, and some people say the very first Mardi Gras was 1699, and others say it was 1703. Nobody really knows for certain, but they do know when the Pope made it official at that time, not the Pope now. <laughs> My peppers are done, my onions and celery are done, so that's the trinity, and now we've got the sausage, and I am using beef smoked sausage rope, and so I'll just, you know, do slices, and then I'll put them in a pan and get a nice char on them. There's a new development, too. Well, there's a couple new developments. The first one is, we're not having red beans and rice. My husband called me from the store, do you need anything? Why, yes, I do! <laughs> So he's going to pick up the Zatarain's box jambalaya for me. And that's how you can tell me apart from someone who actually knows what she's doing with this kind of food. Somebody who actually knows what they're doing, they're going to make actual jambalaya. I've never done that and I don't really think I ever will because I'm happy with the Zatarain's. Okay, also, it has been um, brought to my attention <laughs> that I said... I pirate my recipes, and my child told me I don't pirate them. Oh, now I forgot what he said that's called. I, oh, I'm going to have to find out and get back to you. Here they are to start, but I'm going to make them much smaller, and I'll show you when that comes out. Okay, so I'm going to show you. I like to cut these on a diagonal so that there's more surface that I can make um, nice and crispy. And when you put a crisp on these, it really ramps up the flavor. Um, I know some people like this boiled. No can do here. I can't. <laughs> okay. Here we go. This is my, um, my you know, sausage you saw and my pan here. And I've got, I just squirted some... E-V-O-O, -O. shout out to Rachel Ray, <laughs> and I'm going to go ahead and put some char on these. And after those get done, I'll add the onions and celery, and after those get done, I'll just, you know, get the onion and celery a little bit translucent, not a lot, but just because it's going to cook fine with the mix. And then I'll put the peppers in last along with the uh, jambalaya. And after this gets done, I'm not done, but gets to cooking, you know, you got to cook it for like 20 minutes or something like that. I'll get busy making this. I love these things. <laughs> and I think they go well with this dinner. Oh, shoot. You know what else I forgot? This. Um, I, I'm not sure if I'm going to add them. I think I'm going to add them to the mix. One-handed. There. I didn't want him to dump in the sink. Stay. There we go. These were frozen just a few minutes ago, and I was soaking them in water to get them nice and softened. So there you have it. Those would be tasty, too, in that. Had to get three boxes because all they had were the little bitty boxes. See, they're the size of my hand, and I usually get the family size. So I told them to go ahead and get three. Jeez, I just had a big old accident here with the shrimp. So I was going to season them just a little bit, you know. And so I opened up this shaker part, and this whole part came open. And I dumped half of this in there. So I've been rinsing it out now. Ugh. It'll be okay. What a mess. What a mess. <laughs> It could have been worse. I could have dumped them on the floor, right? Instead of dumping the seasoning. Okay, celery and onions and green peppers and red peppers are all in. And now all I have to add are the, um, the ingredients from the box, the rice and uh, seasonings. So that's one bag. And two bags. Now I have to add um, triple the water for the instructions and hope it fits in this pan, pot, whatever. All right, looks like it's gonna make it. Yay! Stir that around. I'm gonna put you down. 
Okay, all I need to do now is to bring this to a boil, then reduce it down to low and simmer it for 25 minutes. Got a lid here ready to go. And, um, oh, the shrimp is on its own over here. Did I tell you this already? I'm sorry if I did. Ouch, that's hot, mama. <laughs> Made the gas stove mad, angry. Um, so this has got to simmer until it's done. And um, I add it during the last 10 minutes of cooking. I don't know how I'll know if it's within 10 minutes of being cooked, because it may not be, because uh, I tripled the recipe. It's an experiment. <laughs> so now I'm gonna get busy on this. I wonder if I should make two boxes. I'm not sure. So um, how many does it make? I don't know. Oh, look at this. It makes supposedly 10 servings. Yeah, maybe two boxes are in order. Okay, here is the um, lobster, red lobster Cheddar Bay Biscuit. So you want to put the mix in a bowl. I doubled the recipe, so I've got double for water, some cheddar cheese. Now there's also seasoning packets, so when these come out of the oven, I'm going to melt some butter, put this in it, and paint each biscuit. Num, num, num. Good stuff, Maynard. So the dough is ready for the biscuits. Uh, the oven just beeped, 425, and then I've lined a baking cookie sheet with uh, parchment paper, and I will use my largest cookie scoop to make each biscuit. Bowl is empty. Biscuits are on. Oh, look at the dishes and the carnage. <laughs> okay, so here is a stick of butter. So it was half a cup for each box. I am going to put the butter paper over this in the microwave. So if we have any mishaps, I could put the, I think I'll put the cover over it too, the microwave cover, the dish cover that I have in there. And after it's all melted, I'll add this and it'll be ready to be painted onto it as soon as they come out. The shrimp is done and this is working on thinking about being done. The mix. You just brush it on. There's, this is where all the flavor comes from and the cheese that you put in here. There's a full cup, probably more, because I really only eyeballed it per usual. Probably more cheese than it called for. And I'll show you at the bottom of one. As soon as I get this done, this is way too much butter. <laughs> um, I wonder if you could freeze this and then use it on another biscuit type. I bet you could. People freeze butter. This just has some, you know, herbs in it. I've got my um, assistant here, Miss Amanda, <laughs> and she is doing the filming for me because I don't have three hands. Okay, what do you think, enough? Yes. Okay. <laughs> okay. Oh, they feel really soft though. Probably because I put too much cheese in them. So they're gonna break apart, but they're gonna be, can you see them? Ow, yes. Ow, ow. Okay. <laughs> So this is Amanda's plate, and she's having, you know, the jambalaya and the cheddar bay biscuit and some fruit. And this is a sweet iced tea. She doesn't put ice in her iced tea. I don't, I don't know about that. <laughs> I need lots of ice. And this is my son's, and you could smell it from way over here because he dumps all that Tabasco on it. Ooh-wee! <laughs> okay, this is it. Hope you have a happy, happy Mardi Gras, and take care of yourself. Bye-bye.